Okay, now that you went ahead and filled everything in that the force had to be going up when it was at the bottom and to the right when it was at the left-hand position, we're going to talk a little bit about what we're seeing overall. Okay. Now, there is a general way we can describe the direction of the forces as it goes around in clockwise rotation. And what is that direction? Correct. Absolutely. Thumbs up. Yay. Um, that is inward. Okay. The net force is going to be inward. This is called centripetal force or centripetal. Centripetal is Latin for center seeking. Okay. So that means it's going towards the center. Now, this makes tons of sense because this is going to be an application of all of our Newton's laws of motion that we've already learned. So let's start with the first law. Okay. Objects in motion remain in motion in a straight line at a constant speed unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. So we know the direction is changing. Okay. So we know that there is a net force, which basically is an unbalanced force, okay, is going to be equal to the centripetal force or towards the center force, which pulls or pushes the object moving in a circle towards the center. So the object moving in a circle must be pushed towards the center. So that a force towards the center is going to be super helpful okay, when we get to our second law, that F net is equal to MA. Okay. We've already said that the net force is the force centripetal. So we can say that the net force is just going to be the centripetal force. Okay. And it's not just any acceleration, it's a centripetal or center seeking acceleration. Now, to help with that, we're going to use that the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Right? This is one of those fancy on the equation sheet equations. So, highlighting it here. Yay, yay, yay. All right. Now, when we're talking about moving in a circle, we need to talk about how fast it's going, okay, which is that velocity. Now, when we square it, we're basically going to be getting rid of the direction anyway. So what we're really talking about here is the magnitude of the velocity, which is basically just the distance over the time. Now, if we're talking distance, Right. What does that mean? Well, what's the distance of a circle? Correct. It is the circumference, and the circumference is simply 2 pi r. Right. The time that it takes to go around, we need to define as the period. So the period tau is the time to complete one revolution. Our 2 pi r over tau is velocity is an equation from our equation sheet, so we're good there. And finally, we can get to Newton's third law. And the reason I'm bringing up Newton's third law is because there is um, a force that we want to talk about that I think you may have heard of before, which is the centrifugal force. Okay. Centrifugal. Okay. Emphasis on the F. Sometimes this is called a fake force. Okay. Another way to think about this is it's really the reaction force. Okay. 
to the centripetal force. It is not, the centrifugal force is not the thing that's causing it to go in a, in a circle. Rather, it's the reaction to the centripetal force which does cause that circular motion.